Yes. Hi, good morning. Um, happy Carnival Tuesday. Thanks to all who are attending the workshop. My name is Julia Paris and I'll be taking to you taking you today um little yellow and diseases in coconuts. Um, my post is a, a plant pathologist, and you all may be wondering what exactly is a plant pathologist? A plant pathologist is someone who studies diseases in crops and so like bacterial diseases, fungal diseases, and viruses in crops. So today we have a wonderful topic on lethal yellowing and coconut, and it is, please remember during this presentation that this disease has official, officially not been detected in Trinidad and Tobago. So bear with me while I share my screen. Okay. Hi. So as I said before, the presentation is in lethal yellowing diseases of coconuts, um, which is the causal agent is Candidata phytoplasm palmi. And so just a basic introduction. Lethal yellowing is a phytoplasm disease that attacks many species of palm, including date palms and coconuts. In Trinidad, it is it could possibly spread by the the plant hopper Haplaxis crudus, formerly known as Mundus crudus. As I said before, you please remind, remember that this disease has not been detected in Trinidad Tobago. The vector, so Haplaxis crudus, which is the plant hopper, is the vector which transmitted the disease. I should mention at this point the phytoplasm disease is similar to HLB in citrus or citrus greening or Hong Long Bing, which is also caused by a phytoplasm. And that, that disease is also vectored by a psyllid called Diaphrena citri, but um, phytoplasm in this case is vectored by the Hepatitis crudus. What a phytoplasm is, is a synthetic organism, uh, is a pathogen, sorry, that is found in the um, the phloem of the palm tree. Now, the phloem, if you remember your form five biology, is the feeding um, the feeding part of the plant, the xylem, the phloem, and the vascular bundle. However, it is not known that this phytoplasm can survive outside of the plant or its insects. As I said again, what is a phytoplasm? A phytoplasm. Is, is a type of bacteria that lacks a, a cell wall. Because of this lacking of the cell wall, it cannot be cultured in the laboratory. What that simply means is if we have a bacteria like Xanthomonas, we can usually um, cut out the infected part of the plant, put it on nutrient agar or water agar, and actually uh, extract the bacteria and then identify it through various means. However, because this specific phytoplasm is a type of bacteria that don't have cell walls, it cannot be cultured through that, that means. However, it can be detected through PCR technologies. Now, because of COVID, I show everyone knows what PCR technology is. So basically, they, are, they, have, they have specific primers, and in the case of lethal yellowing, the primers are called L1 and L2, and these primers are uh, used in a uh, real-time PCR to detect um, tissue, um, to detect the bacteria. So this is one of the ways in which we at the ministry would be able to detect if a coconut palm or a palm tree has lethal yellowing disease. So as I said, even though it's not detected in Trinidad and Tobago, why are we worried about it? because it's in the Caribbean. It's in Belize, it's in Cuba, it's in Haiti, and of course it's in Jamaica. It is also in Central North America, so it's in Mexico. It's also in Florida. So, and from the devastation and the reports we have been getting of the, from these countries, we can tell that this disease, once 
it enters Trinidad will be devastating to the coconut industry. Now, remember that lethal yellowing symptoms could look like other symptoms, like other symptoms that we have in Trinidad, like red ring and so forth. So what, once I go through symptoms, re please remember that no symptom is a diagnosis for lethal yellowing, but the disease progression can help you identify this disease. So what is the first main symptom? The first main symptom is what we call fruit drop. So the coconut will prematurely drop off the tree and there will be a black a black water soaked mark by the calyx of the fruit this is in this is one of the first symptoms of little yellowing that pre, premature nut drop and of course with that characteristic black watermark that you clearly see in the picture then it is followed by what we would call flower necrosis so the inflorescence flowers turn yellow to creamy, normally light yellow and creamy white in color. They become black and necrosis, which is death, and it, it death develops. So these emerging flower spikers usually are totally blackened. These symptoms, however, will only be observed if the tree is actually flowering. And as I said before, the disease progression is one way to tell, but is not is not conclusive. So the next part, so foliage discoloration, because there are different types of um, coconut trees. There's like the Atlantic tall or the Jamaican tall. There's the Malaysian dwarfs, and which is the shorter trees. The uh, the foliage discoloration can actually vary. But usually it's the yellowing beginning with the older leaves and it just hangs down. And in some cases, this leaves is, remains very turgid and stays on the tree until it dries up and, if, and it looks like a skirt. And it eventually, after several weeks, it falls off. So if you look to the picture here, this is a clear indication of the leaf, the flag leaf, all the leaves are falling off and just hanging on to the tree. You can also see it in the Atlantic tall types. Um, the first tree out of the tree trees here, how the tree, the, the, the leaves have just hung down and looks like a skirt, but has not completely fallen off of the tree. There's also the dwarf types, which is the Malayan dwarf. They sometimes don't actually dis distinguish that yellowing it's known for, but sometimes there is a grayish brown rather than a yellow. But as I said, you would have had to see the nut fall drop, the um, inflorescence dying, and then the, the, the leaves just drooping and hanging onto the side of the tree. And of course, it's the very common picture of the death of the apical meristem because the disease is called lethal yellowing. The tree does die. Eventually, the entire crown of the palm withers, the tree topples, leaving just a bare bark. Palms usually die within three to five months of that first symptom. And for us, that first symptom would be the not fall drop. As I said before, the death of the apical meristem is an ad it advances throughout the plant and the youngest leaves collapse, the crowns hang down, and this is how the plant dies. So in this picture here, we have a nice picture of um, manzanilla stretch. Very all the Atlantic tolls or Jamaican tolls. I'm not sure of the variety that's on that stretch, but usually the tall trees are very susceptible to this disease. And on the left here, we have a picture of a country that is devastated by lethal yellowing. So we just want to show you how this impact of this disease could really be. So this is just a visual representation. The, neither the first picture on your left here, I think it's your left, I'm not sure it's on your side on the computer, um, with all the nice coconut trees, 
is Trinidad and you preach on the right is a country that has been devastated by lethal yellowing. We don't want to get like that. So the impact for most palm species, including coconuts, is death of the apical meristem, which usually occurs only when one and a half to two thirds of the crown becomes completely brown. So what is the Ministry of Agriculture doing to prevent this disease from entering our country? Lethal yellowing disease has been declared by the Plant Protection Act as a notifiable disease by order in 2020. So what this basically means is that this disease is now notifiable, that you have a legal obligation to notify the Ministry of Symptoms of this disease. We are going to conduct surveillance activities in 2000, in this year, 2020. 2022, sorry. What that basically means, as I said before, lethal yellowing is detected via PCR protocols. So the ministry has, been, has a biotechnology laboratory, which is um, becoming equipped to detect lethal yellowing. So basically, it's a, it's a, I will go through the sampling procedure. The sampling procedure is that we have to drill the bark because there's enough research in other countries that the phytoplasm is spread throughout the tree. So it is not accumulated in the leaves or nuts or the roots, and you therefore you can drill the bark of the tree and get a sample. Once that sample is co collected, the DNA is extracted. Once the DNA is extracted using um, specific protocols set out, you would amplify the DNA and using the primers, and we will detect if the phytoplasm is found in that tree. Because PCR is so um, very, has a high detection rate, therefore the, te the tests would be very informative for, the for us. However, because PC, because we need a positive control, we will also need to send a confirmation or a subset of that sample for confirmation testing by an accredited laboratory. This simply means that this laboratory has been accredited and has a lot of capabilities in testing for this disease. So this should be completed by the end of 2022 and we could have a confirmed status of whether Trinidad has lethal yellowing disease or not. But as I said before, there has to be sampling of trees and then it has to, we have to then extract the DNA, then amplify the DNA and then test for it. And then a backup test, will, a subset of those samples will be sent for um, accredited testing to ensure that all protocols are correct and that the samples truly doesn't or have any lethal yellowing. What can you do? My colleagues before, um, Ms. Betty Suhan and um, Rishi Mohansing talked about the importance of getting an import permit and to check with plant quarantine before you bring with any planting material in the country. Because to you, it may be a nice pretty plant or palm you see in another country, but to us, it's a disease that you cannot see that's in, within the tree that, can, that has a high establishment rate in the country. So the second thing you can do, if you see any of these symptoms, as I said, the disease progression is not a confirmation, but it's a way of detecting. Because remember, we said that this disease usually in about half of a year, the tree is killed in most instances. So you need to report any suspected symptoms to your nearest county office, or you can call or email the plant pathology unit at the Ministry of Agriculture. Um, I've paused this slide here for a little while, so if anybody would like to take down the Plant Pathology Diagnostic Laboratory email, the, or the Research Division's um, telephone number. But please remember that um, when sending any emails, you can also send pictures. That will help us a lot 
in identifying um, symptoms and just put an area location and your name so that we can contact you. And, I, and as we said before, please don't pack a pest. You may think that, and we will cont contact you to do a field visit um, for to, de to determine um, the spread of the symptoms. So as we said before, please don't pack a pest. Um, check with plant quarantine. You, know, you may want to call um, your nearest county office again or email or call the plant pathology unit because as I said before, the devastated impact of lethal yellowing is great. The disease works very fast within three to six months of full symptoms. Signaling has already determined that um, the plant will die. As I said, it's called lethal yellowing for a reason. So thanks for paying attention on a short but sweet presentation. We wanted to just drum home the effect that lethal yellowing has on other countries and the fact that this phytoplasm cannot be detected by regular means. It must be detected by PCR technology or ELISA if you have as such. Um, by PCR technologies and that the ministry is doing its best to make sure that the coconut industry in Trinidad and Tobago stays sustainable for many, many years to come. So it is Carnival Tuesday. Um, I thank you all for joining me. And if there are any questions, um, I would be willing to answer. So I'm not seeing any questions. So in the time being, I'll drink water and mind my business. <laughs> it's Carnival Tuesday. So as I said before, lethal yellowing is not confirmed in Trinidad. Um, Mr. Ashuk, um, you're from South. What we are saying that we do, I, we do identify that um, cedrus and manzanella would be high risk areas, but we also must remember there are other diseases in coconuts like um, red ring disease that the, the yellowing is still very um, present, uh, but the main cause would be that distinct red ring when you cut down the palm. Red ring, however, is um, entomology. I'm not sure my colleague under the bus it is, it is, it is a nematode that is affected and transported by a, an organism. So um, red ring does look similar, has some similar stages to lethal yellowing, but lethal yellowing is most noted for is the um, the nut fall drop. Um, le, le, okay, I'm bad at pronouncing names, I'm sorry. Le Bella, how much is a PCR test? So since it is for, is it a part of a serving? It is not being completely offered as a service by the ministry at the moment. But right now we are just, it's going to be done as a part of the survey. We are going to do all eight counties in Trinidad and Tobago to determine if, um, thing, if you would want to be a part of the survey, please, I'll go back to the slide before, send your contact information and your farm location so we can probably take your farm as a part of the survey. Um, Laurie John, does it have any negative effects on humans? Not as far as we know. The main negative effect is one of the possible treatments for palms is using an anti antibiotics. However, we, it's not recommended for coconuts because use of the antibiotics will end up in the coconut water. So they don't use antibiotics at all. So um, the disease does is it does not have any negative impact on humans and so we must be mindful that this is why um, it's 
it may be called lethal the other wing, but it's lethal to the coconut tree, not to humans. Um, Mr. Rodney, you're asking about existing diseases in coconut palms. Um, so there are existing diseases, but as I said before, they fall under the specialty of entomology. So probably I should explain that a little. Um, as a plant pathologist, we more focus on diseases that are of a fungal or bacteria or a viral nature, and the entomologist would be more focused on diseases. So, and then there's the gray area of nematology. So, red ring is one of the diseases that's very prominent. The, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the weevil. The weevil carries the um, the nematode, and the the plant also dies. And when you cut the stem of the plant, um, you will see a distinct red ring. That is different from what we are discussing, which is lethal yellowing. There's also um, uh, a phytoplasm, not phytoplasm, sorry, um, phytophthora, which is also a bacteria, but it does not kill the tree, but it has, it would, uh, it doesn't kill the tree as good as lethal yellowing, but the phyto, um, I keep saying phytoplasm, I'm sorry. Um, phytophthora is also a disease that affects coconut. So it's phytophthora palmi, palmi. Yes. Yeah, Hi, Laura. Um, we would have to see that picture. Um, would you be kind enough to email us that picture? Um, for people who are not seeing her question, she's asking, um, her coconut tree is getting black at the inner leaves and the tree is dying. Can it be a cause of this? As I said in the beginning of the presentation, um, what did, did Laura, did the, did the nuts drop? Did by chance the nut drop or did the flag leaf drop? Then it may not be lethal alone. We also have to take into consideration if the water, if the area around the coconut tree is water soaked, or um, uh, if we see boring in the tree to see if there's any beetles boring into the tree. So we would have, to, uh, we would kindly ask you to send a picture to the email that is seen on the um, on the slide right now, and um, said that your name is Laura and you were the presentation and you're just sending a picture and we will get back to you. So. And we will definitely try to make a field visit. And please don't forget to put contact information and an area where your farm is located. Hi, as I said, I'm pretty bad with names. Um, Jagda Mutu. Hi, good day. I have a serious problem with the rhinoceros beetle destroying. So, as I said before, the rhinoceros beetle is red ring disease. Um, my very excellent colleague, Mr. Amil Bash. He is working on that. He's an entomologist and uh, I think I don't want to take away from his shine. <laughs> he, um, I know they are doing some traps. Um, as I said before, it's not that we are trying to think, it's that we have specific roles and he's more in charge of red ring disease. So if you two, I could, um, you could send a picture of your estate and um, information and I could forward it to him and he could probably help you. As I said before, the beetle, as I, as he's been enlightened to tell me that the beetle, um, they're doing some traps and he would have to give you a better assessment than I could on that, that specific disease. So, um, uh, is there any other questions? Hold on a minute. Again, with um, Ms. Vishma Lachman, Ms. Vishma, um, was it a good fertilizer to use for coconut trees? Well, it depends on if the what stage of the trees you have. Um, uh, I can definitely get the recommendations off to you if you would so be so kind as to send an email. And uh, as I said, the beetle, the beetle is. Um, um, the beetle is is not my specialty, and I think my colleague would be doing a presentation on that in the near future. 
So you all can look out for that. Um, Ashuk Parta, you're asking how much it will cost for a field visit. Um, the ministry does not charge for field visit. Um, as I said before, we, uh, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, we do field visits. You can, as I said, contact us. And you, we also do diagnostic samples at the laboratory at Centeno. You can drop in your sample and we will get back to you in a, a period of time. <laughs> um, La Bella View. Oh, you're sending an email. Thank you very much. Um, we will take your information off and we will send your email probably by the end of this week. Um, what causes, or oh, Susie Cat, what causes young coconuts to fall off? As I said, there are many things that could cause that. We don't have any pictures, so we don't want to speculate at this time. So um, we're just going through the last of the questions. If you would bear with us a couple more minutes. I know it's a carnival Tuesday, but we have nowhere to go. <laughs> Yes, Laurie John, um, we will um, look to email you at your email that you put in the chat. Are we just double checking to see if we missed anybody? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Alison, okay, we'll just call you Alison so I won't butcher your name. That, <laughs> that yellowing, okay, so you're saying that you're getting some not fall drops in two locations that is very concerning because not fall drop is one of the um did you see the blackening on the kilex which is at the end of the coconut you can probably if you have pictures as i said before um it really helps for quick spot um, educated guesses because as I said we have to use PCR to confirm the test but it does help to have pictures that's why the ministry is pushing this email address um, usage division it, it was set up by my director Ms. Diane Ramrup she is pushing this email address not pushing we are pushing this email address because a lot of pictures help in ease identification so if you can send a picture uh, as you said, you're in San Chiquito, and um, yes, those, the yellowing and the dropping of knots are two major symptoms. So, but there could be other causes, but please send us a picture and information that we could probably do a field visit. Um, we're just looking at the last of the questions. So, come with new comments. Um, purchase of coconut plants. Um, I would definitely have to get back to you on that. Um, we will take your information and probably contact you um, later in the week. Um, Katan, what is a vector? So the easiest way to explain what a vector is, is like a mosquito that carries malaria. Malaria is actually the causal agent that makes you sick. But how does malaria get into your system is via the mosquito. So a vector, in this case, Hapaxis crudus, is the vector, and it is in Trinidad. But because they don't have the causal agent, which is the phytoplasm, Candidatus palmi, it cannot cause the coconut tree to get little yellowing. So that is basically what a vector is. A vector is a vehicle that transport the disease. And of course, we didn't go into details about um, other host plants and so forth, because we were mainly focused on coconuts and palms. Hi, did we read this? Hi. Okay, the fertilizer, sorry. I don't think there's any more question. I'm seeing somebody sitting there in Wall of Field. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, next time you go to your state, please take pictures and send it to the email. So write down that email, everyone, and send us your pictures. We want our inbox flooded with questions after this presentation. Okay. So if there aren't any more questions, I will just give any shy person, you can email us if you didn't want to leave a Facebook question. 
or you can um, yes this videos will be placed on the ministry's facebook account and please as i said before um write down the email write down the numbers and get in contact with us because we will only know when you send us pictures I would like to give a vote of thanks. I would like to say thank you to Ms. Diane Rabrook, my director, the director of research, the Ms. Susan Mutu, which is the deputy director of crops research, um, my colleagues in pathology, Mr. Kisha Ragbe, another pathologist, Mr. Terence Jack, another pathologist, um, Caroline Lacan, an EO1, um, Raymond McCoon, also a one um the very valuable support staff um my um brianna um solan kizzy and um, um melissa and charada they have been valuable support staff at the research divisions plant pathology unit and um, we hope that you find this presentation was very interesting and if you have any questions again please feel free to send us an email or a phone call at the number seen at on this presentation thank you again and please enjoy the rest of your carnival choosing <laughs>